guys, happy Thursday. I don't know what the date is. Sometime in April, it's a Thursday. So, it's bright and early in the morning. I wanted to start a series on relationships because so many people come to me talking about relationships. There's so many issues in relationships. And I just wanted to do a different series um, on different things. You know, there's so many different aspects to a relationship. Are you in the right one? Have you found Mr. or Mrs. Right or Mr. or Mrs. Right Now? How do you know the difference? What do you do if you can't let go of past issues? What if you're involved with somebody who's not only not the right one, but they're mentally ill? So there's so many different things. I can't do one video. So for those of you who are struggling in relationship, stay tuned. And I'm going to load them all together, I think. You know, um, I'll find a way. I'm really new to this YouTube thing, so bear with me. But I'm going to try to load them all together so they're easy to find. But, um, and if there's something in particular that you'd like to talk about or that you'd like a video on, please comment and let me know. Um, and if you need an appointment, comment, let me know, email, message. You can go to YouTube, my actual page, and message me there. Um, you can go on Google+. Plus. I am pulling back from Facebook. Um, so that's, I mean, you can reach me there, but on the business side, but that's probably not the best place. So today I'm going to start off with letting go. All right? Um, so stay tuned. I'll be right back. Okay, so it's Thursday morning, and I want to start this relationship kind of series. And there's so many different things to talk about in relationship. I know that I can't do it in just one, so I want to break them down. And if there's something that you specifically want to talk about or want me to do a video on, you want to do it privately, you want me to do a video, let me know in the comments, okay? Um, or you can go directly to my YouTube, like my page on YouTube, and there's a place to message there. So... Um, please do that if there's something that I can help you with or again if you'd like to make an appointment I work with people individually I work with couples I work with families so whatever you need just let me know okay so today I want to talk about quote-unquote soulmates and you know what I don't want to use the term soulmate I think it's overused the right one is there really a right one I don't think so, because think about this. I don't know how many people are in the world. I guess I could find out statistically. But I was born in Manchester, New Hampshire. Now, if there's only one right one, what if he's born in Japan? And I'm not going to go to Japan, you know? I know that if we're meant to be together, he would come here, I would go there, we would cross paths somehow. But I just tend to think that with all the people in the world and all the different opportunities, that there is more than one. First of all, I think that most people can make a relationship work unless they're, they're just exactly at different ends of ways of thinking and that sort of thing. But pretty much anybody can make a relationship work. But how do you know you're with the person Sorry, let's Google. How do you know you're with the person? I'm not going to call it a soulmate, but a good relationship, a good match for you, the person that will be a lifelong relationship. That's what I want to talk about today. So, first of all, I think before you start any kind of relationship, you should make sure that you're ready. Um, now, if you're already in a relationship right now, if you're married or if you're, you know, in a committed relationship or even in a dating place, I'm not going to say break that off and start over because of your soul wounds and because you need healing. I mean, you're already there, so start in the position that you're at. Make yourself the best you that you can be. If you're not with somebody right now, if you're single, if you're going through a divorce, if you're, you know, in between relationships work on you first we all have things that we go through in our life nobody has a perfect life and it creates these wounds within us and unfortunately many times we carry those wounds into relationships sometimes not even knowing so we could take a perfectly good foundation and break away break away chip 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 away until it's no good anymore and come to find out through our own healing it could have been different. Now, 
both parties are going to come in with their own quote unquote baggage. But if you can be as healthy as you can be to begin with, first of all, not only are you going to end up with better matches for yourself, because what's going to happen is you're going to be drawing to yourself uh, what you need, what you desire. You know, a lot of times when we're coming from an unhealthy place, if you know how energy works, you could draw to yourself exactly what you don't need, you know, um, especially if you are really, really wanting a relationship, you could attract to yourself maybe somebody that's emotionally unavailable um, or, or um, married, you know, or for whatever reason wrong for you. Maybe you really despise alcohol or drugs and you keep meeting people that are alcoholics or whatever. It's, it's an energy thing. So what you got to do is you got to align your own energy, raise your vibration, make sure that you work on those soul wounds. And then when you feel like you're ready, then go for it. But if you're already in a place where you're already in a relationship, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean you can't do this. Still work on yourself. And what's going to happen when you're with someone is either they're going to change and grow and evolve with you, or the relationship is going to cease. And that goes for any relationship. That goes for, you know, uh, friendships, uh, relationships at work, whatever the case may be. And hopefully if you're married, your spouse will grow with you because we're constantly growing, learning and that kind of thing. Okay. So let's say you're not married. We'll just talk about this, or maybe you are. And let's see if you're with the person that you're supposed to be with. I just want to give you a few different, and you know, there's more, there's more, but I just want to kind of list maybe 10, um, um, I guess signs that, uh, you're where you should be. Okay, so number one, you meet each other and there is a, an, a recognition. Even if you've never met them before, there's a recognition. You feel as if you've known this person before, that either they look familiar, they feel familiar. Um, number two, sometimes, most times, they will remind you of somebody you love very dearly. They'll remind you of your mom, your dad, your sister, brother, your best friend, an old boyfriend, girlfriend that died or that you just haven't seen in a while. It's it's a reminder of love, though. It's not like, oh, boy, that reminds me of that jerk. No, it, he or she reminds me of somebody I love dearly. So recognition, like a remembrance or, re, you know, like a resemblance to somebody you love. Number three, there's a comfortable, you're comfortable together, even right from the start. You know, when you first meet someone, everybody's got their best foot forward, you know, but with this person, you just feel comfortable right from the start. Even if you find yourself in silence, it's not an awkward silence. It's a comfortable silence. If you can sit with someone in comfortable silence, that's a great thing. Okay. Number four. The changes that they bring up in you are for the better. They change you for the better just by them being part of your life, not because they're on you, not because they're trying to teach you something, just by them being in your life, you become a better person. You strive to be a better person. It may be because you pick up on things that they do, or it may just be because you're a lot happier, you become a better person. Uh, you know what? A lot of times... I think that's number four. So number five, a lot of times you have met previously or you knew each other previously. You might have known each other like growing up or you met even, you know, at the coffee shop years ago and then you come back into each other's lives. That's always a big sign. Now, the enemy can use that too and bring people back into your life to make you believe that. So just make sure the other stuff matches too. Okay, number six is this sometimes, not always, but sometimes there's this really weird connection with dates. Like I, I have a very good friend. We have the same birthday, 14 years apart. Um, his son died on, I think it, I think it was my youngest son's birthday. Um, uh, just different dates coincide. Um, so they may mean something completely different, but it's like, whoa, okay. Or, you know, I graduated on the day that you got married. Or, you know what I mean? Like dates coincide with each other.
Um, another thing is you may have had these cryptic dreams prior to meeting. Um, you dreamed of that you know, I used to have these dreams of this man and he never had a face, but he was always the same man. <clears throat> um, or, you know, you dream that you're with this person, but you don't know who it is. And I'm not saying you see them, but um, you have like these cryptic dreams prior to meeting this person. It could be five years prior. It could be a month prior. And it doesn't always happen, but that's something. And both of you will find, like, in discussion that you've had these things. Or um, if it's not a dream, maybe it's just a knowing. Like, I know I'm going to meet somebody important or something important is going to happen to me. And then you meet this person. Um, there's an amazing chemistry. An absolute amazing chemistry. Um, you feel at home. When you're with this person, you feel at home. You can be your absolute authentic self and not worry about it. Um, and they accept you just as you are. Another thing is our soulmates tend to be a reflection of us as well. So you understand each other. So not only is it home, but you have an understanding of each other. You may find that this person, he or she, um, does certain things or has done certain things. And maybe they don't even understand themselves. Like, why would I do that? But you totally get it. Even if it's right or wrong, whatever, you totally get what their mindset is. Um, and you can, both can be your authentic self. <clears throat> uh, another thing is you may find that at one point or another, the worst of you comes out. I don't know, you're having a bad day. The absolute worst of you. You break down because of something that happened years ago and you find yourself raw, vulnerable. You don't normally do this in front of people, but it's okay. And you can't believe that that actually happened. You opened up, but it's like a trust, a vulnerability with this person. Next is there is no insecurity about being alone or being separated for a time. There's no jealousy. There's no worry. It's like you just both know there ain't nobody coming in between this, you know. Um, there is no, I mean, jealousy. There's no um, competition. There's a sense of security even in the beginning. And you may not know why. You know, he may be, he or she may be very popular and maybe in the past even had a lot of boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever. But there's a sense, it's not just trust. There's there's a sense of togetherness, of bonding, even right from the start where you know that it's okay. It's, it's okay. There's a strength there. Um, another thing is it might not make sense to the rest of the world. You might seem different. Um, but your goals are pretty much the same. Your mindset's pretty much the same. And it, you may feel like Aladdin and the princess, you know what I mean? Where you come from to two totally different worlds, but between the two of you, you know that you're right on track. You're right on target. So even if it doesn't make sense logically and on paper, it makes absolute sense. And it's almost as if the decision has already been made you're both just surrendering to it and you're like, okay, this is it. Not in a bad way. You don't feel like, oh gosh, like he, he or she is not abusive. He or she is not manipulative. You can be your authentic self with that person and that person is their authentic self. You have the same goals, you know? Um, this is how you know. This is a, re a lasting relationship. This is absolutely lasting. And no matter what you guys go through, you'll get through it. Okay? Do I want to call it soulmate? If that's what makes you comfortable. Do I want to call it the right one? If that's what makes you comfortable. I think it's the perfect relationship for you. It's committed. It's lifelong. And it's where you belong. So if you found that, consider yourself blessed. Consider yourself lucky. Thank, thank God every day. Thank each other. And make it work. Because everybody, I don't care who you are, is going to hit hard times. And everybody, I don't care how in love you are, is going to come to a point where you're going to have to say, today 
I'm going to continue to love this person because maybe they're doing, you know, you've been together 10, 15, 20 years or even two years, whatever. And whatever they're doing is just driving you crazy. They're not listening to you, whatever the case may be. Remember that person you fell in love with and tell yourself today, I will love this person today. I will understand this person. We all go through that sometimes. It's not, you know, I think some people get this misconception that that fairy tale love, you know, the endorphins being released is going to last forever. And it doesn't last forever. But true love lasts forever. And there are going to be days that you're annoyed. Think about like if you have children. Think about your children. You love them every day. But are there days where you're just like, Arr. of course there are. If you say they're not, then you either haven't been a parent long enough or you're not being honest with yourself, you know? But you love them every day. That never changes. Your parents. Your parents might drive you crazy. But you love them every day. That never changes. Why can't it be that way with your spouse? But instead, I think people, especially in the Western culture, marry with the knowing that, hey, we could get divorced. So I would think if you're already in a relationship, like I said, take these, see if they fit with you. And we're going to do some more videos on how to work things out and that sort of thing. But if you're not with anyone, make sure you get ready first. Look for these signs, because if you've got these signs, you're with the right one. And then even if you're with the right one, like I said, there's going to be days where you're not so sure about it. But hang in there and thank you, lucky stars. All right, you guys, have a great day. I'll talk to you soon.